it's an old instrument. Uh, horns have been around since Viking times, thousands of years. If you unwound this, it would be about 16 feet long. And in order to play the French horn well, you only need to be able to do two things. You need to be able to breathe, and you, you need to be able to make your mouth buzz, like this. If you can do those two things, eventually you can make notes on the French horn. horn makes all the different notes is an acoustical, acoustical principle called the overtone series. It's a cylindrical instrument. You'll see the beginning, it's pretty much, this, the size of the pipe is pretty much the same, but as it gets longer towards the end of the instrument, the bell, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So that makes it a conical instrument. And by acoustical principles, conical instruments are all capable of playing any of a series of notes called the overtone series. And then what they did is they said, hey, Let's make it easier to play a lot of different notes. And so they added valves to it. Back in the day, the instruments didn't have valves. They added valves, and just like on a piano, the longer strings are lower notes, and the shorter strings are higher notes. Here, we're going to make the length of the tube this much longer, and so we're going to hit a whole bunch of different notes than the ones we just hit. Here is the first one. Now we're going to make the instrument a little longer. Now you parents, when you're deciding what instrument you want your kids to play, I always remind everyone that if you learn to play the French horn well, you'll get a scholarship to go to college. Everyone is always looking for good French horn players. Um, and in orchestra music, the French horn almost always has the important part. Um, sometimes it's even the hero. Sometimes it's a funny hero, like Till Eulenspiegel. Sometimes it's the opera hero, like Siegfried. Mozart was writing concertos for French horn, they didn't have valves. So you had to be able to play all the notes that you needed without using any valves. And Mozart was very smart. He wrote a lot of the notes so that it coincided with what you can play naturally from the overtone series. Let me demonstrate, and this will not be note perfect, but let me de demonstrate what it would have sounded like back in the day to try and do the first movement of Mozart's third horn concerto without valves. Now I'm gonna press the first valve down, but that's only to make it in the right key. 
That's the only valve I press. Everything else will be embouchure. <laughs> technology, I can play that even better using actual valves. French horn is lucky in that it's of the, all the brass instruments, it's able to play really, really low and really, really high. Here's how low the French horn can go. And here's how high. How did you create the different sounds with the embouchure? Just with the embouchure. It, when you make a buzz, the embouchure, you can make the buzz higher or lower. And then you do that on the mouthpiece. And then you do it with the horn on the mouthpiece. So when I start students off, I first have them playing, just buzzing with their mouths like this. Then we buzz on the mouthpiece like this. And then we pick out notes on the horn and we buzz them. Choose the French horn? Uh, Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> you want it to be the hero? <laughs> That's Princess Leia. Everything John Williams wrote has made, makes me want to play French horn better than I already do. Pretty cool. Well, thank you so much, Frank. You're welcome. This was a wonderful display of the French horn. You're welcome. I hope to see you playing the French horn, and when you're ready to take lessons, I'll be here at the school ready for you. <laughs>